This is a quick tutorial on how to make a tablecloth using physics for Second Life or Unity or basically anything that's going to take a collada 1.41 mesh. Um, first, what I'm going to do is I'm going to add mesh cylinder. And then I'm going to go over here. Let's draw this out a little bit. I'm going to go under the physics options and I'm going to set collision. That's all we're going to do with this right here. This is basically going to be the template for our tabletop. And I'm going to go up to add up here. I'm going to add mesh plane. Now I'm going to hit the S key on our keyboard and draw out the size. Make it any size you want. Uh, just remember if you make it too big it's going to drop on the floor a little bit. And then I'm going to move the position above the cylinder. Now this tablecloth, what we're going to do next, we're going to go into edit mode. We're going to hit our W key on our keyboard and we're going to select subdivide. This gives us four squares in here. We're going to go to number of cuts and increase those squares up to 10, which is as far as it's going to let you go. After this step, what you're going to want to do is you're going to make sure you want to hit the hot key U or uh, you could also go over here to mesh, UV unwrap and unwrap it, but I'm going to hit U. I'm going to unwrap. This is going to be for our texture application later because we're going to want to texture this in whatever environment we're in. And we don't want a separate texture for every little square and vertice or face. We're going to want one that covers the whole tablecloth to give it some realism. So now that we've got our texture unwrapped, we're going to go over here and add a modifier. This is our modifier tab right here. Subdivision surface. And then we're going to go over here. And we're going to, this is our physics tab by the way. We're going to click on cloth. And under our cloth presets right here, I'm going to set it for silk. And I'm going to go down to cloth collision. My quality, I'm going to set for two, or from two to three. You can set this higher. The higher you're going to set this, the higher quality of cloth you're going to get, which is also going to be more vertices, more faces. So if you are doing this for something like Second Life, uh, New World Grid, you know, basically any of the virtual world platforms, you're going to want to keep that quality somewhat low, otherwise your prim count is going to be very high. If this is going to be for Unity or something, I'd suggest three or four for sure, possibly four. That way you're, it looks like a nicer cloth, and those environments can handle a little more vertices and a little more faces. So we're going to go to our cloth catch, and here we have our bake option. But we're going to want to go to object mode first, and then hit bake. And if you can see where my cursor was, it's now counting down. It's going to go zero through 100. This might take a second here. Just bear with it. Halfway there. Generally for me this moves a little bit faster, but since I'm running camera recording equipment right now at the same time, it takes a little bit longer. But now that we're here, it's done baking, I'm going to take my timeline here and I'm going to drag it to where I want my frame, which I think we'll leave it right about there. That looks good to me. And then what you're going to want to do here, you're not going to want to export everything, of course. So I'm going to go down and I'm going to click on my cylinder. I'm going to hit X hot key on my keyboard. Select delete. I'm going to go back up and select my tablecloth. Um, one thing to make sure, when you go to object mode and edit mode, you can see your vertices. Right now you're popping back to a flat table, right? This is not what we want to do. And I've seen a lot of other tutorials here that leave out the end steps and everybody gets confused. What you need to do from this point is go back to your modifier, hit apply on your, your subsurf modifier, and apply on your cloth modifier. Now when you go into edit mode, it stays the same. So I'm just going to select all my vertices. I'm going to go up and export it, and I'd be good to go. You can import this as a Collada 1.41 mesh into Unity. You could use it in your... C Sharp XNA projects, you can use it in Second Life, is, which is, I'll do a follow-up tutorial on importing normals. If you do use this in a virtual platform, I would suggest setting your normals for 115 or 120. Um, that will give you a nice smooth cloth, and when you apply your texture, it should apply like a normal tablecloth texture. I hope this helps someone out, and happy sculpting.